Welcome to the Market Maps Premium Session. It is Wednesday, April 24th. Welcome back. Welcome back, all those viewing the recording, and welcome to everybody who is uh, giving us their time. That's showing up for this three-series session from Tim. Appreciate it. You're seeing my screen now, but we're going to hand it over to Tim in a minute. I just wanted to say a quick hello, and give me just a second. All right, Tim, you there? I am here. All right, say hello. Hi, it's a pleasure to be here. It's been quite a while since I've sat side by side with you and presented. Um, are you trying to pass to me? Yes. Oh, hang on. This is good. Everybody sees this. We we generally fumble a little bit in the morning. This is normal trading. We're traders. We fumble yeah, plenty. Yeah, it is what it is. Uh, clean. There we go. Got a screen now? No, I don't want Traders Expo. That's a big fumble. That was no. your ugly mug. Well, that hold it. We'll do. Uh, here's what we'll do. We'll do uh, screenshots. I have a couple explanations. We'll do that on Friday. Make you show up on Friday. How's that? I'm in. Okay. So let me just give you a moment of history. I mean, I see Rita and Phil have been here really since the beginning. Um, some people that I know that are newer, but Grace, uh, Edward, uh, some guys from the breakfast sessions, some women breakfast sessions. So we started this whole thing in 2003. And when I decided to move to Arizona, I thought I'd get rid of Traders Expo. I'm sorry, folks. Um, when we, when I moved to Arizona um, to get my breathing straight, um, it was clear that I needed somebody alongside me. And, of course, Shane also took care of it for a couple of weeks. And then um, we worked together. I don't know, maybe through 2013. And um, things were going good. I decided that I wanted to do some more advanced materials. And we opened up breakfast sessions, evening sessions. And um, Shane, went, we went from a duo to Shane taking over Margaret Maps. Hey, Yuri, how are you? Dominic, um, these guys are getting up in the middle of the night. And I appreciate it. Um, so today, I want people to understand up front. This is not like an IB presentation. You know, I was going to show you like four slides, one with a with a nice Einstein picture. But you know, we're not trying to do um, a series of slides, uh, a lecture series that I do for IB or the CME. Although we're going to go back to doing those. Um, this is market maps. This is what we actually do Monday, Wednesday, Fridays. Tuesday, Thursdays, we do breakfasts. And somewhere in there, we feed, we, we uh, fit in evening sessions. So Shane has gone back to doing this individually. Um, I'm going to come in. I want for the market maps people um, and anybody that wanted to poke their head in and see what class looks like. What a class looks like. The next, this session and the next two sessions, um, I'm going to teach a market map session. I'm going to teach some things that um, I teach and use every day, and they are a little bit different than what we started with. Think of it this way: the material was taught to me by Alan Andrews and Amos Hostetter. And, um, you know, they got their trading chops in the 1920s. And there are plenty of people out there that are going to say, well, you know, we have computers, and now we've got AI, so who cares about what happened in the 1920s? I'll take material that has been working for over 100 years any day of the week. And now, it's not static, meaning... We don't freeze it in time. Some of the materials that Shane does, I, I will say this about Shane, he is an Andrews traditionalist. Um, I am 
more of a modifier now. At some point, the materials had to morph and grow. Um, so I took the the one thing that's never changed is money management. That's that I got from Amos. Um, the Andrews material, the physics behind it, Newtonian physics hasn't changed. Do we have another branch of physics? Yes, we do. Quantum mechanics. And in fact, in the breakfast sessions, we've actually been exploring the implications of quantum mechanics. And later on, maybe Friday late, but certainly on Monday, um, we will get to a couple examples of where quantum mechanics set of Newtonian mechanics are calling the tune and it doesn't in a big sense it doesn't really overwrite Newtonian physics as much as it explains some things where we scratched our head and went oh, I think this is how it works but it doesn't re it's really not working exactly right but it, it's about right and so it's a better explanation a better fit is it the end it's never the end same thing with these techniques. We use the techniques, the longer we use them, um, the more they become ours, and we, you know, uh, we let them grow with us. So, I'm really here for the market maps people. This is a market map session. I hope people enjoy watching what a class looks like. I hope you come to all three classes. I generally take questions throughout the session, but let me get on a roll today. And if I don't take questions every two minutes, then I'll do some more tonight. And I see Jennifer Teets is here, who is a Forex trader with me and a, and a wonderful lady. I haven't seen her all. Hi. I also, by the way, I have to celebrate a friend of mine, uh, OC, some of you remember him. He is one of the original members of the Coral Gables group with Dr. Andrews, 93, sitting out in the backyard, uh, nice enough to come and, and watch us. It's just the two of us left. So, uh, OC, have some lemonade on me. So, yeah, again, if I don't answer your question, I will. Those of you that are here um, and are not in Market Maps or the breakfast sessions, um, I actually can't see your questions right now. When we're done, we may open it up to questions from everybody. Right now, I can't see your questions. You can't type back and forth to each other. It's just the way GoToWebinar works. So, all right, so let's take a look. Um, Hang on just a second, Tim. Let me just jump in real quick. You hear the birds in the background? This guy's yeah. living the dream. <laughs> Let me just jump in real quick for the, for, the, for the people who are visiting and just say something about market maps. Oh. And then, then I'll let you rip. This is market maps, okay? This is what we do. We map markets. Sometimes we lose what's in the name here. You look at the chart here. There's a flow of price, a flow of chaotic bars, a flow of energy. What we're doing is we're learning the language of price. Price is telling a story. And we're taking that, that flow that you see on the screen that looks chaotic, and we're mapping it. That's what we teach, the language of price. And that's what we do every week. So just an idea of what, what goes on in here. So I just wanted to throw a little bit of that in. I'll let you go. Okay. Here we go. So... Before I start on this chaotic flow, I'm going to tell you the number one reason people fail as traders. Now, there's people, if I polled everybody, I'd get all kinds of ideas. But the number one reason is people have no idea what their risk is because they're so fascinated with wins. And um, if you talk to 
psychologists, if you talk to chemists, you'll find that that chemical that is released into the brain when you're gambling and you're thinking about that win, it's better than you know, pick a drug. I don't even want to say the names of those drugs, but you know, it's a you know they say this is, X is a thousand times better than you know one of the opiates. This is a hundred thousand times. It's unbelievable. And I sit down and talk to people. People actually tell me they look me in the eye and tell me that they can make ninety-seven out of a hundred trades winners. And then I'll ask them, okay, so are you trading for a living? Well, no, I don't have an account right now. What? Generally, people go like this. Oh, I made four ticks. That's great. Hey, I made three ticks. I made a tick. I made 10 ticks. Then they lose 70 ticks, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So since the very beginning, I had an older brother that let me trade in his account when I was a teenager, if you can believe that. First thing he did was school me in money management. And here's the deal, and I love it. I still use the same thing. My loss slot is a minimum of $150 per trade, a maximum of $300, okay? I want to keep the average under 2.6% of my, the money that I'm trading. So this would be a, this would be like using a CME contract, a regular sized CME contract, hundred thousand bucks. So I won't risk more than three hundred. I won't go three hundred one, three hundred two, three hundred three, three hundred eight. Period. I also won't go below one hundred fifty because when I go below one hundred fifty, I'm inside the noise of these bars. I'm just going to get shagged out for no real reason. So. Take a look at this, think about it, and then I'm going to give you a visual that we use, and it's a good thing. We call it a go-no-go. -go. This is 200 bucks in oil. This is crude. It's 770 ticks. I'll make a, a long explanation short. I'm using ticks because... This is not time, this is space time, which is mo more coherent, more, more strung closely together. We don't get those big dead gaps overnight and all this other stuff. It's not time and it's not just space, it's space time, period. And it's space time in the sense that Einstein meant it. Okay, so on a go, no go, I'll risk $200 if, if when I map out the chart, I think the logical profit target will give me three times as much profit or more, four, five, eight, whatever. But it needs to be not one of those airy-fairy ideas. You really have to say, okay, it's going to break this because, and it needs to make sense. So I won't take a trade less than three to one. That doesn't mean I'll get three to one. Sometimes I get stopped out. Sometimes I get to break even and then get out. Sometimes, occasionally I'll get to profit. Top. I don't hit that many profit stops these days, but um, especially trading crude. So let's let's do one last thing and then I'll start mapping out. Everybody knows what this is. It's the same as this chart, we're in two dimensions on this chart, X and Y axis, right? Hopefully you're all shaking your head. Yes. Now, I had this really cool diagram for you, which is in some slide somewhere. There we go. Now we have X, Y, and Z. And the Z can go in the back, or if you want, like when I'm at the movies, if you want to pay for that extra 3D, although I don't know if they're making that many of those right now. Uh, you know, it kind of comes out the screen right at you. The little bird flies out of the screen. Um, that's a third dimension. Now, I'll show you why I do this as we go along. 
and I'll just leave this here for now. Uh, no, you know what? I'll just drag it over the side. So as I get up and I'm watching this mark, there's a bunch of trades in here, guys. So in your mind, you might want to go, I think I would try this. I'm willing to risk $200 to make X. And here's where I think it could go. All right. So first thing I notice is I get up that morning and start to do my work. And, you know, I get up here around here, 3 o'clock in the morning, um, is I'm looking back about a day, day and a half. This is, should be about 100 to 150 bars, by the way, and there's a little thing on Ensign that you can do to set it that way. Um, more than that, you're scrunched way too in, um, and you're going to miss the detail of what price is doing, and that's what we want to pay attention to. That machines have the language of price. You're going to miss it. It's just going to be a whisper. Instead, you want to just be inside of it like he is here in the birds, paying attention. First thing I notice is this. Well, is this faster to just type in? I've got a low. This is called an advanced multi-pivot. We're just going to draw this line, extend it out, and why do I extend it out? There's two reasons. First of all, I want to know, is this low, a good low, a bad low? Are there higher lows? Sure, there are. And here's another higher low. Yeah, and I'm just not going to pay attention over to here. I was going to do my work. Now I've got a high here. No, no big deal. And you can see it breaks the high, makes a new high. Breaks the high, makes a new high. But notice... She don't break the high. So I'm looking at a series here that starts out the lower high. Now, why would I do this in the morning? Well, I've got to put up the, put up the map. Where have I been? Then I can start to think about where I'm going. This should just say, we'll just, we'll just dump this one. Okay, and then now we've got a low. And these are minor swings, okay? And you can see we have no problem until we get here and start to head lower. And we wonder, is this a lower high? Well, it gets beat by a tick or two here, but we don't take out the high. And that's a bit worrying. Then what happens to price? This is the important part right here. Now what happens? So it's... It would have been dinner time the day before for me. And as I do my work the next morning, I can say, well, this is, a, this is the ultimate lower high for this. And then we get this wide range bar lower. In a lot of ways, this is a gap, folks. And gaps are funny animals. They're attractants, meaning Bryce likes to travel up and down gaps. So if we can get back inside of this gap, once we get down here, we're liable to travel back up the elevator. And then it depends on where we go from there. So what, what happens? We get this gap. Um, and we're going to actually call this vert, vertical. This is as vertical as you can go. And vertical means you're going to run out of energy. And we're, we're very cognizant of potential and expended energy. And uh, I'll give you homework at the end of the session. Um, there's a video I need you all to watch, even the people that are visiting. Um, that is wonderful 
uh, about explaining expended energy, um, and it will further your understanding not only of energy but also the markets. So we gap lower this wide range bar, and you can see we continue. We we pause, then we continue lower, and we make a series little series there of lower lows. Well, that's not particularly great, but as I said, we can look at this gap. It's like an elevator, right? And a um, little too loud for me. Let's get Not what I wanted, but I'll fix it. Once we get inside the elevator shaft, let's get the elevator shaft covered. So here's the top of our gap. You can see people reluctantly, you know, here's the first guy through the door. Anybody there? Am I okay? Is my head going to get lopped off? And they get back up here, pull back, retest the bottom of the gap, and then they realize, oh, again, it's the middle of the night. It's like a jailbreak. They realize nobody's awake, and look at the close here. Gap open by a tick, and the run is on. We try to pull back, can't make any progress outside the gap. Price tends to run to the top of the gap. So what do we do? We run to the top of the gap. Okay, that's good. We would expect that. And we teach that here. I'm sure Shane teaches that here. And um, that's one reason why we would map things out. We're looking for repeatable patterns. Now, maybe this is something you want to trade. There's a problem, though, which is you'd have to risk 200 bucks. And we always ask this question. What's my first problem? My first problem are these lower highs and the top of the gap. Um, that's only one and a half times, maybe close to twice. That's not a trade that I'm willing to take unless I think it's going to pull back and then zoom off to the top. But I better have a pretty good reason. I can't think of a good reason. I need price to show me that it's serious. Right now, I'm worried about this. And what do we get? We get those dreaded flat tops. Meaning, there's somebody that's sitting here willing to sell, whether it's a hedger, whether it's, I like to break the market into three groups. Retail traders, and they make up the majority of the market unfortunately, meaning they're there. Um, that's where a lot of your profits come from, and then they're gone because their accounts blow up. So there's retail traders. Then there's medium guys. There's people that actually make a living trading. Guys, I should say guys and girls, pardon me. Um, at, at, at its peak, Chicago Mercantile Exchange had more than – Chicago Mercantile Exchange – and the border trade, just the two of those, had more than 60,000 traders. So, I mean, that that's nothing compared to, you know, if you look at the international numbers of people electronic trading, but it tells you it's a it was a huge industry, and it's, it, it, of course it's bigger now. Um, those are the medium-sized traders. They come in every day, sit down, do their business. It's their own capital. Then there's 
you know, I, I don't know if it's 1%, 2%, 3%. I, I hesitate to say 1% because that's got some bad connotations, but it's a very small percentage of the market. Um, people that manage billions of dollars, there's even a couple conglomerated funds. They, they don't, they, it's less managed than um, they take, uh, they take investments and put them in other people's investments that have a couple trillion. So huge amounts of money and then that gets moved at different speeds. This type of movement comes from medium-sized traders. Been there, done, these are guys that have been there, done that. They understand the repeatable patterns and they know when they can push a market, when they can stop a market, and when they need to be gone. Unfortunately, a lot of the public will be getting long on a bar like that after they see this bar, see this wide range bar opens on its low, closes on its high. They're all excited. This next bar is really going to take off. And you can see what happens. There's plenty of people that are willing to sell against the flat tops. So we've got a series of flat tops that's after lower highs. We've got lower lows. As I said, I'm up around here. Um, and and to be honest, at this point, I'm short. It has nothing to do with this area. But um, I'm, I'm watching the market. I'm mapping things out. Um, and, and I'll do that all day long unless I'm teaching so why do I draw these advanced multi-pivot lines I'm sure some people in market maps draw them if not everybody um, first of all they're a great map marker they show me where the prior low was. I don't care about a low that's two screens to the left of this. At some at some point, these signposts start to fade. I can't see that far behind me. And what I care about is what's going on around me and what's going on. I actually keep white space over here to remind me that this is what I need to worry about, not two screens over there. So. A lot of people will scrunch in and scrunch out 110 to 150 bars put it on your screen relax um, I trade one thing at a time if I'm in one market that's what this is what my screen looks like I watch up to five markets I, I saw that Shane had five markets he was watching I watch up to five markets the markets switch depending on what's moving really but uh, some things are basically pretty always in my basket Crude for the last 18 months has just been a mover. You want to trade for the day, there's generally one sitting in crude or two or five. Um, so it's it's been in there. Bonds have been in there. Um, one of the currencies here and there. So, all right, so now I'll watch live. And let's see what this market does, and I'll give you some ideas idea of what I'm thinking as I watch this market live so to me this is not good this is a failure we came up normally these uh, medium-sized traders if they're going to take out a high they have to do all this work by themselves Okay. They've got to push it up. They've got to get everybody else bullish and buying, etc. But in this market, they have the extra energy sitting there from this gap. And, you know, it's almost like a vacuum. It sucks it up. Now they have the strength to try and assault this top. And instead, what do they do? 
They don't want anything to do with it. Give me my money and I'll see what the retail traders do. I'll see what the big boys do. And what do the big boys do? They got no interest. What do the retail traders do? They buy at the high and then you can see them. We call them sheeple. You can see them start to like little lemmings run away. And the medium traders go, go ahead and puke. It's okay. Don't want to don't want to touch it. So what do we get? We get a small pause here. Take a look at where this is. It's right in the middle of the gap. We pause there. Then we double the range. We see this all the time. Those dead Greeks, Archimedes and friends. The work is amazing. It holds up so much better than what people put out now. So we pause at 50%, then we double the range. We go down, we would call this filling the mountain. This is a mountain base. And the question is now, will this mountain base stop price? Take a look over here. None of the mountain bases held on the way down. Once we left lower highs, everything got broken. Personally, I don't know what will change that behavior, so I'm unwilling to try and get along. We get a double tap here on the mountain base. And then power through. I'm not wild about that, but that's okay. I, I am short, so. Watch price. This is our key right here. So we're approaching the low. Now we've got another lower low. We've got lower highs. We've got flat tops after filling a gap that have spawned more lower highs. It's not good for our team here if you're long. Let's see what price does down here. Seems like it's gone a long ways. For crude, um, you know, 100, 100 points is not the end all and be all. Hey, it's a nice day. It's a thousand dollars a contract. <clears throat> See, we get multiple tops as we try and make our way up. That's like clawing at the uh, at the bottom of the ocean. They're trying to get their way up, and we again another new low, another new low. It's like a broken record here and there are people that will sit on their losses and say it's got to go up here because I can't uh, I can't believe it's going to make another new low you know don't don't ever find yourself there price can go a lot farther than you can believe all right, so I take a look at this, and we can draw all kinds of things. We draw media lines. Um, this is what I drew off my notes, just so you know. I bisected this section. We would call this a B, C. If I was going to draw a media line, I'd pick a top, I'd go A, B, C. But basically, action reaction lines are the master set. And then underneath it are things like median lines, uh, lower down in usefulness channels, linear regression channels. Those are all more and more and more curve fit. And we want less and less and less curve fits. So median lines, let me stop and give you a Just a just a quick a quick and dirty lesson. A median line takes 
three pivots, any three pivots, as long as they're pivots. And you can calculate over all instruments, over all time frames. been there, done that a number of times. There's also been two PhD studies on the work that I put out. Um, because it is, it, it's almost unbelievable. The, ra the range is 72 to 87 percent that price will make it from the outer parallel to the median line off of any pivot, period. There's also rules that we look at, and now that quantum mechanics has come in, we'll talk about either on Friday or Monday. Now these rules that say as we leave, let me, let me just draw a median line. So this is off the high. I like to draw them actually off the width, but it's a tick difference, not a big deal. Um, there are rules that say, as we come off of this outer parallel and start to head lower, here at the parallel, 43% of the time we're going to zoom through, 43% of the time we're going to turn and go lower, and the rest we're going to consolidate and then make a new move. <coughs> Excuse me. What we've actually learned, I'll give you a peek at quantum mechanics, is that so price goes from 43, then with an 80% probability, it's going to hit this median line. So we're going 43 miles an hour here. 43 miles an hour over here. Now we've learned, actually, that it's 43 to 0 to 43. Once it makes its break, it's 0 to 43 to 80% or 80 miles an hour. Then as it approaches this line, we'll slow from 80 to 43, and at the apex, the top will be going zero. And that has to do with space time. And as I said, we'll do a little diagram and talk about that Friday or Monday. And it makes more sense now that we understand that. So when we look at a median line, it's giving us probabilities. It's not giving us an exact price, an exact pixel. Remember, these charts are done on pixelated screens. What it's giving us is a probability. So the line actually, at the beginning, if I can grab it, there we go, um, will actually look like, they actually look like this, or maybe even triple this. And... It's somewhere in here is the apex. It's not, it might be 05, it might be 07, but it's close enough for jazz, so to speak, especially because these were developed for not intraday trading, but daily, weekly, monthly trading. We've learned now, or at least I've learned, action reaction lines, the reason why they're so powerful is because I can do something like this, this high, come down here, cut right through these centers. Okay. And then force it forward. And I can do this. Here, and we'll, you'll see us do this. You'll see me do this as I draw throughout the three days. Then I'll connect it to the low. If I do that, so this is a mini course in action reaction lines. We'll call this C1. Here's our action. You can call this R1 or A1. 
it doesn't matter. We can have debates for days about which one it is. You choose your poison, that's fine. C1, A1, and then you have two possibilities. One, you can wait to see if it's equidistant, or you can actually just, eh, it's probably gonna work on the flat tops. So now, what's equidistant on the flat tops? Um, I'm turning my head to the to the right, so I can see if I got it just about right. If you want, you can even measure it. If you want, you can do a median line, but I'll show you why this is more powerful. Okay, so it gives me a good idea of where it's gonna fail, and indeed it does fail. And for someone that's watching the replay and go, well, well that was a really spectacular example that you knew in advance. When you teach, you can only teach people with examples. Then you can move to more cryptic examples. Then you can move to, you know, et cetera. Once they get some training wheels on, they can try sim trading and then trading. And, you know, you can certainly do real-time analysis. But the real learning actually comes on examples. All right, so we see how this is similar to a median line. How can we make it better? This high, once we have decided that this is a lower high, and at that point it starts to look like a lower high to me, you got your choice. If you're going to make it a width like I did, we'll connect it to this high and we'll connect it to this eye. And you can see it's close. However, it's not the same. The entire you shifted it down. And why would I be willing to do that? Because this then is an exact, remember, light moves, particles move in two basic structures. They move in photons, individual dots, or they move in waves. Waves are probability, which is what a median line is. These are laser-like single, single photons. So we get the angle directly from real price to real price. Or you could grab this high, this low. What are you giving you the same thing? Versus, so let's put the median line back up. And you'll see they're very close, and yet they're different. And so one is a probability. The other, this is a vector. And a vector has, of course, a line segment, which is this high, this low. Then it's projected forward, and it can give us speed, velocity. We can measure it against other vectors on the same two-dimensional chart, which allows us to combine the two and go, oh, this one's moving faster than this one. Oh, this one's moving slower. So we can then look at acceleration. Um, and that's important. You can say price is accelerating in the third dimension. This is a three-dimensional line, if you think about it. It's the first derivative. It's a three-dimensional line. We can look at the third dimension versus the two dimensions. So watch very carefully. A high. Now let's be specific. This is a two-dimensional high. It's not a three-dimensional high. And where do we go? We get the same two-dimensional high. Now, in three dimensions, you know, the high is way over there. We've been making lows all along. So they are working together right now. 
but for example, when we made this two dimensional this little bitty high here, we were never close to three dimensional highs, which are way over there and gone. So we take a look at when two dimensions and three dimensions work together and when they break apart. When they break apart, it gives us an indication that something is going on. So, I add in my notes, I grabbed the width high, I bisected this area right here, yep, and then, okay, well, I want to get, I want to get it exact for you. This is what I wrote. Uh, and then I extended it. Let's go three times, two times. Good. And threw it out there. And then let's see how that works out for us. Price comes down, double taps our mountain base. This is what we taught fifth graders. At one point we taught 150 some thousand fifth graders in a program called Bright Start. They were teaching all kinds of different things, but had to come up with something um, that we could teach fifth graders easy peasy uh, instructions and they had to make money. And what we found is they could only be long. Those were the rules, long stocks. We found these mountain bases. Once they make a fill, they could put a stop underneath the fill of the mountain if they liked why it was going there. Um, they averaged 47% a year, non-annualized. So it's pretty good. Um, so here's our mountain base. The question is, will it hold? And the answer is no, no. Okay, so now we go down and make a low. Um, and I did this just again. When we end up with the map, I want you to be looking at what I was doing. I connected this right through this close. So right to here. And that's my line of force. It's a vector. And you can see it is not a perfect bisect, but it bisects this BC pretty nicely. That's good. And we're going to call this a pursuit curve just because the class came up with that name. Um, but let's see what we do with it from here. I was checking the time because I'm at uh, Mark and Maps, not breakfast. So I was like, uh, hang on, hour and a half. Okay, got it. So we're good. So we start to turn higher inside bars. Volatility expands a little bit. Um, the one other thing I don't have on here, which is on every one of my charts, hang on. There we go. Um, I've always got an average shoe range. I just want to know if the average shoe range is expanding or decreasing. That's all I care about. Most of my keep two, a very quick titch, maybe 34 and then uh, 100 or 200. Somebody's going to send me an email and say, um, you're using $200 for a stop, which is 20 ticks. Can you give me the formula for the movement in the ATR to the $200? I want to know if volatility is changing, but my slot is always going to be 150 to 300, period. So no, I can't. Two, I don't relate them that way. Um, right now I am using twice the ATR but there's plenty of times that we're looking at five or six ticks in oil, and I'm still using 200 to stay out of the noise. 
Money management when you trade is key. All right, so we, we're pulling higher. And you would expect, I mean, look, when we make a series of lower lows, you do expect that price is going to fluctuate. Your job now as a trader, if you don't have a position, is do I want to get short down here? Uh, probably not very good trade location. Do I want to wait for a rally? If I want to wait for a rally, do I want to see the highs again? Uh, probably not likely. Do I want to see a 50% pullback, which would be basically back at the bottom of the gap? Maybe. A little more reliable, 72.05. Do I have a, if, if that's my idea, do I then have a stop? Again, more uh, homework at the end of the session. So we start to pull higher. Now we leave double tops. If this bar was one tick higher and the low was one tick higher, these are called mirror bars. Um, but basically, we're just same volatility, same area, more of the same. In fact, at this point, why not? No, that's not it. You come with me. Why not just draw in flat tops? So why would I draw in flat tops? As I watch this market, remember I had people that took advantage of this elevator ride and then unloaded their position as we got to the top of the gap which caused this failure but it was all really predicated it formed flat tops so we're going to watch over here and see do we get flat tops and if we do is that it because right now the swing high is all the way up here The swing eye, one more time, is all the way up here, which means this is the next most logical place for stop loss orders, breakout buyers, people that want to sell a rally. This is where the order book is. There might be some right here at this center section, but I'm not going to put a stop loss here. I might think about an entry with a stop above here if I can afford it. Come here. I need you. Okay. So I might put an entry. Maybe I want to get short. But here's the problem. I use 200 bucks in oil. 200 bucks doesn't allow me to get above 72, 21, and I need to be three, four, five, six, seven ticks above it. Now, I have people in class that are successful that use all 300 bucks. That's fine. The problem with all 300 bucks, of course, is in order to get the three to one, that's a $900 movement to the upside. I just hit 200 bucks. It works or it doesn't work here. I'm going to shake this one off because my stop would have to be all the way up at 26 or higher, and it doesn't work with my go-no-go. -no -go. So let's move that out of the way. So we're watching flat bottoms. Sorry, flat tops. Um, I can even steal these. They're less drawing for me. <clears throat> let's see what happens to our flat tops. 
Oh, well, maybe I should have gotten that memo because that's an ominous looking bar. But as you watch price, keep the following in mind. If your computer charting program is told to make 15 minute bars at 14 minutes and 59 seconds, it will get ready to print the next bar. If it tells, if you tell it, do 777 ticks, it'll count the ticks. And when it gets to 776, it just gets ready to put the next one in. It doesn't think about it. So some of this fluctuation is due basically to what you told the computer. And if you went from 777 to 377, you'll get a slightly different picture in individual bars. In the flow of price, you'll see the same thing. So don't let that throw you. What you won't see, again, we're looking at space time here. If you look at a time-based chart, 15 minute crude, 10 minute crude, you'll see lots of dead time, lots of floating, nothing's going on. And the reason why is because now we've taken out one of the dimensions. So I find this much more interesting. Flat tops, we try to break through, but look at our close. Flat tops. And there's a bar of interest. We have a cluster of opens and closes right here. It opens here, tries to go higher, closes on its low. Looks like it's trying to make, I'm not gonna give it a lower low because it's within one tick, but looks like it's trying to make a lower low. And of course, we do get a lower low. So once again, lower low, so flat tops, but not something I get people to tell me, I can watch this and you know, I can sell at 82 and buy these back at 75 all day long. Not really because one out of X amount of your trades is gonna be a huge loser, unfortunately. You're in the noise in the middle of this market. Um, it's not that you can't read your chart. It just doesn't, in the long run, it doesn't work out. I have traded at, you know, the five largest institutions in the United States um, as one of the big hitters. I was at Commodities Corporation, ran Commodities Corporation in Chicago and had a bunch of traders underneath me, um, taught traders at the CME. The people that are down in the noise are the ones that get trampled in the end. Now we spring out of the hole, so we've got to give it its props again. And uh, let's take this and just change the color. At the moment, it's just going to be an advanced multi-pivot line. Just that. So that's our low so far, 64. And we're back, right back into the range, which not that exciting a thing. So I'm back to, to watching, still short. So it's okay, but you know, the whole thing is kind of slowed down. I can't complain. We continue to make lower lows, not by a lot, but Sometimes that's how profits come. Now we poke above the flat tops, huh? And you have to give it its, its due here. Here's a higher high and 
I know in breakfast, if I asked this question, um, everybody would know the answer. Um, the market maps, folks, once I see this bar, I have something on my agenda, something that I want to see. And, you know, it's on my checklist of things that I want to see. If I ask right now, Al or Dominic or Chris would say, well, I'd be looking for a higher low. Show me a higher low. So we just making higher eyes means that we might just be making expanding pivots. Show me a higher low, then I'll get excited. All right, so we make a higher height. We come back and tap the flat tops. Throughout charting, if this line is important or this line is important, pay attention to the backside when we come back and test that area because if it's in the right area and you have the right structure, it can be a wonderful entry, it can be a wonderful stop loss because price will often do exactly this. Come back, tap it from the backside, and then take off again. So now we've got, we do statistics on this just to know when things are unlikely to continue. We've got a bar that's higher, another bar that's higher that's two, three, four, five, six, seven is a lot of higher highs. And of course the string is broken. Not that I'd go short on seven, just you know things are now stretched out. And this type of behavior shouldn't surprise you after seven higher bars. So we take our advanced multi-pivot line, put that over to the right, and let's see where we go from here. I wondered if we would pause on the back side of this flat tops and part of it I guess is my fault the people that are short there's no buyers home ain't nobody there goes through there you know knife through butter another we call these idget bars closing on their low another idget bar Here's a wider range bar, so the volatility is staying a little bit higher, but it closes kind of in the middle, so it really doesn't give us much of anything. And what I'm looking for is a bar that makes me, as a trader, sit up, pay attention, check my trade plan, check my orders, instead of, you know, bars that continually put me asleep. Notice that there's an odd formation. We're going higher, each bar is higher, and there's a beautiful little diagonal line here, a three-dimensional line right here. However, look at our closes. So the two are not working together. Those are the type of little clues um, that can make all the difference in your trading. The two are not working together, and there's the result. So we break out to the downside. We're in the same quandary again. If we get down here, will the mountain base hold? Or will we just continue to slide lower? Going a whole lot of nowhere. Price does that sometimes. Looks like we've slowed down and started to turn higher.
64 is the low. Oh, one bar. This bar is the bar that made me sit up and pay attention. And it, to you, maybe this bar is totally meaningless. But I'll show you what I was thinking and why it made me sit up. It changes the complexion. of the entire chart for me. So let me write what I put on my chart. I write to myself um, notes as well as on my chart. New low. Just give me a second to type it in. It'll, I, I don't mind the slow pace, so. Those of you in market maps have heard us use the expression great separation, which means, of course, this portion, and then we close all the way back up here. Five to seven is normal in crude. This is quite a bit bigger. So great separation. And uh, you'll see this on the next bar. Okay, so unlike the IB series or uh, some other things I do, I'm not here to highlight a trade or a series of trades. I just want to walk through and talk about the language of price here. Because that's what we do in marker maps. Um, you know, we have days where we do things live. We have days where we're learning totally new things. In the breakfast session, for example, as I said, we just did some, a series of quantum mechanic moves and uh, I'll just flash you a little bit later in the week, but we do all kinds of interesting things. So, when I see this bar, and especially when we get the follow through on the next bar, which watch what happens. This is our mountain base. We come down and pierce the bottom of the mountain, close with great separation. Then, so people decide, you know, we can make this thing go lower. They push it lower, they run into the mountain base, and as I said, pay attention to the backside of these important lines. We spring out of the hole and close with even greater separation. This bar makes me sit up, this one makes me a believer. So now I'm short, but my interest is to turn my position and get long. We have a expression. Now I'll be looking for, if this isn't it, I'll be looking for what we call the, the last photon, meaning the last lower low emitted from this move. At the moment, this is how the map looks to me. If this ends up being the last photon, this is what it looks like. Not so bad. You can see the by, this is like a, you turn your head to the right. Um, this is like a mountain base. And then we're at halfway through the space-time area here. Now the question is, I'm going to go back to what Chris and Dominic and Mary, et cetera, would ask. Where's the higher low? 
I've got a higher high. Well, I'm happy for you. Where's the higher low? This isn't a higher low. This isn't a higher low. So price is gonna have to leave a higher low here or not, not working. So what do we get out of this? Things settle down a little bit and kind of take a breath. Let's look how fast this is moving. It's 10.30 in the morning. So that at 10.30, exactly. And there's a, believe it or not, there's a seven, this is a seven second bar. And these bars will vary in quote unquote time because space time is equal. Let's look at the next bar. Okay, so here's one that's 19 seconds. So this thing is really moving. Uh, looks like about 30 seconds. Starting to slow down as we come off this apex, which is actually, in a quantum sense, real. That's what it should do. So I'm taking a breath, I'm going, okay, look at how fast these bars are going. And then opens on its low, closes on its high, and makes a new high in a matter of seconds, which is why you should never chase price. Have your stop in the market and just leave it, okay? So takes out the high. Now this is a failure bar. Doesn't mean we're going down yet. Although take a look, here's a failure bar, which marks the high. Here's a failure bar, will it mark the high? I will note this. Higher high, so I've got a higher high. I've got a second higher high. I'm all excited because this bar closed up here with great separation, and yet I don't have a higher low yet. Which means all we have is expanding pivots. There's nothing I can do with this because there's no stop anywhere to do anything. Price starts to pull back. We get a wider range bar that closes on its low. Maybe we'll never make a higher low. It's been a long time. We continue to make lower moves here. Well, we get a bar that pulls back, a little bit of follow through, a little bit of follow through. Now we can take a look and say, okay, one bar that closes higher, second bar that closes higher, third bar that closes higher, three higher bars in a row. That's what we got, three higher bars in a row. Um, and most of that rally, was just a race. We have Shane, Wendy, anybody? Yeah. Um, you normally go to 90 minutes? We go as long as it takes depending on the lesson. We just, we finish it. So go as long as you want. Okay, I'm gonna go through, mm, Next session and then, next section and then, yeah, it'll be about 90 minutes. Yeah, we do two hours, whatever. I mean, it, we finish, basically answer everybody. And well, this will, okay. This I don't know about you, but I enjoy getting into it and it's not well, something to get done and over with. I, we'll find out whether or not people are enjoying what I'm doing today. But this has also given me a rhythm, a little bit of a rhythm uh, for what I want to do. Um, and then... My guess is Wednesday, sorry, this is Wednesday, Friday will go a little bit, we'll go longer on Friday and we'll go longer on Monday just because, um, frankly, I get, like you, I get more excited. So 
Okay. Yeah, you got three days, so I, you don't want to overload anybody. Also, I don't want to blow through too much material. I want people, I'm going to give some exercises. I want people to do them, and then uh, we'll come back on Friday and uh, have a nice long class. So everybody bring a snack on Friday. Okay, so thank you. Okay, so we're, we just poked our head up and made a higher high. We're pulling back. So far, we haven't found the higher low. In your mind, you should be thinking about what would a higher low look like, and it especially we give we give you. I'm sure we have given you. If you're not in the class at the moment and you want to take market maps, one of the things that we're very good at is we will give you, this is what it means to make a swing high. This is what it means to make a swing low. This is what confirms a higher low. This is what confirms a higher high. Higher high is easy. It takes out this high. But that in and of itself doesn't work. We need the other side. So think what it would take to make a higher low. It's not just leaving a bar that's higher than this, because if that was the case, this would be a higher low, and this would be a higher low, and this would be a higher low, and this would be a higher low. None of those work. Now I've got a series of bars that are starting to move higher. But are they higher lows? As I watch price come up to 05, and remember that 0456, it's not only the it's not only the mountain base, it's also remember. This is the one thing that's probably still on some of the medium traders, the guys that make money every day, and yet are trading their own account. They're not trading public funds. They're not trading, et cetera. They're, they're just making money out of their account. And that's the, those are like the hard workers of the market. Um, is this gap area, and then of course, this major high. And then we're they're watching like me, trying to decide if the low is in. So we pulled back up to the bottom of the gap. And the question is, what happens as we get closer to it? So we've pulled back. You can see we made a nice run out. We got about a 50% pullback. Now we're starting to work our way higher. Somewhere in here. I put on my chart, and you probably should put on your chart. This is this a candidate for a higher low? I mean, it's right in the middle of nowhere, but what would make it a higher low? I'll show you when it happens. In the meantime, think about it. See if you can project what it would look like, and let's see how price resolves this quandary. We break above these double tops. Does that make it a higher or low? No. And congested. Okay, how about this? It's not that it's the first higher high. It's not that it's the second higher high. It's not that it's the third higher high. It's that this higher high confirms this as a higher low. It's kind of a swing, swinging nature. OK. 
okay? And we work on this in market maps with a lot of homework so that people can read swings, swing highs, swing lows, higher highs, higher lows, lower lows, lower highs, so that it's automatic. You don't have to think about it when it happens. So first higher low, probably the case. Is it official? Yeah, I guess it is. Well, okay. Fine. It's just a higher low. The heck with it. I don't know what I was trying to do there. Um, okay, so now let's watch price and see if we can pick up anything other than that. What other clues can we see? Um, things that I use all the time. Some of you may use them. Some of you may not. Some of you may have seen this before. If, if you've seen any of my charting work before, um, again, this, a lot of this material goes back to the, you know, 1907, the 20s, the 30s, the 40s, um, and especially in this hand-to-hand -hand combat area, this always reminds me of uh, uh, hogs and intraday grain trading. So we make a higher high, and we're right at the top of the spot, excuse me, the bottom of the gap, and we start to pull back. In fact, it kind of looks like a route, actually. But I want you to just scoot yourself over to the right side of your chair so that really you're comfortable looking from here to here. I do a lot of these physical things. I'll write checks in the air for my stops. Um, I turn my head to the right. I'll turn my head to the left to try and get a sense of what a slope looks like. Um, if I'm just focusing on this area right here, I'm not just going to move my eyes. I'm actually going to kind of slide and scoot my whole body over there and take a look. Um, and what I see is, I see, I, I see the rhythm, the language, right? Higher high, pullback, probably the higher low. Then we take out the high, yep, higher low, pullback. Now, Andrew's told us when he first did all the work on action-reaction lines that these techniques work in any market as long as it fluctuates. So we actually are looking for the fluctuation in here. We welcome this. We're willing to trade it. It gives us a lot of the clues of the language price. And I think especially when we open it up to the third dimension, which we'll do more work on, on Wednesday, um, you can see price come together, then break down. You can see the forces are working together, and then suddenly it's a all out and out war. So we come up. As I said, if you're sitting a little bit over to the right, in your chair, to me, this is flat tops, then we break higher. We haven't left a higher low yet, but now this is a candidate for a higher low, and when we take out this high, it's a higher low. Now we fluctuate to the downside. When we fluctuate to the downside, inevitably, I will start to do this. I'm not going to start it over here because here we don't have a higher low, and we're still dealing with flat tops. First drive to the top. And they tend to kind of go in pairs, by the way. Which means, 
here's the higher low. First drive to the bottom would be, of course, there. As we head higher and then fluctuate lower, there's not much else to do yet. Why am I counting? To stay in rhythm. Um, I'm sure it was a long time ago, but it doesn't seem that long ago that I did a tango with a young lady live in, in class. Hey, Rita. Rita got it, the higher high, yeah. And, you know, I did a tango back and forth um, with the language of price, and actually was, I, I thought it was a, a lot of fun and worked very well. Hopefully, yeah. Uh, the rest of the class did. So advanced multi-pivot lines. And notice that here's our higher low. We don't take it out. Now we're not taking them out, we're not breaking the lows. Another, I'm not going to call this a higher low because it's inside, but another low that's higher. Sounds like semantics. Now we make a higher high, which confirms that. Rita is correct. Now we fluctuate to the downside. Now the question is, upside, downside. The count would tell us we should make an excursion to the upside. Not get too excited. And there's another higher high. If you wanted to count swings, that confirms this as a swing low, this high. When we make this high, confirms this low. It's a beautiful stretched bar. <clears throat> I've heard Shane teach this. Price goes to an extreme. It doesn't seem like it's gone very far, but these fluctuations are not that large. When price goes to an extreme, of course, that's when we have an edge. And if we were trading larger movements, it's difficult to get yourself to either let your position go and or exit and go the other way when price makes this kind of move. But it's this kind of move on a larger basis, because we're looking for three to one, four to one, five one, but it's this kind of stretched move where we do want to be letting things go and moving. If we're long, moving our long position on the extremes, but it's hard because that's when everybody wants it and you can feel, you can feel the love, but you're just gonna have to let it go. You'll be a better trader. All right, so no follow through. And that's why that makes this a likely candidate. I'm behind. Likely two. Likely two. Pull back. Now watch us fluctuate. If you're long, this is the natural feeling. All right, I'm so excited. Oh man, crude is really crap, I hate crude. Oh, this is great. Oh man, why is everybody selling this? And yet it's just the normal fluctuation and expansion of price. Let it fluctuate. Stick with your plan. Don't worry about it. Life's good. All right, so we come down, make low, close on our high. Should be paying attention to that. Right back up near the highs. And I don't know if that's a new high or not. To me, I'm going to give that a, Eh. But 
one thing I will do right here is, and we'll talk more about these. This is gonna be a big deal on Wednesday. And where did I anchor this? Okay, so I like my lines kind of dirty, meaning I don't mind the slop through. You guys all see the cut through here. That's fine with me because we came right through it and we're just fine and then headed lower. So for me, this line is fine. If everybody has to draw what they want to draw, I especially like it because since I connect this actual high with this actual high, it's a vector now. It's not a curve fit line, it's not probability, it's an actual vector. <clears throat> Why is that important? Okay. We named this line. You can blame this on me, not, not Dr. Andrews. This is a LME, meaning a line of maximum excursion. And it's related when you do a median line, and I'll show you on Wednesday, and then do a modified shift. It's related to the AC, connect the A to the C on a modified shift. Um, it's related to that, but this is an actual vector, not a probability. So this LME is extremely powerful when you use it correctly. And one of the tools that we use along with this LME is the reflection. Ain't nothing down here, right? I'm putting this in space, but I already know the three-dimensional points in space that it takes to make this line work. I can transfer that down here. And again, it does seem like I've got something drawn in space, but that's okay. Let's watch, let's leave it and watch it for a second. Now I've got one, two, Let's see where price is. So we're we're okay. We're got just clusters of highs and lows up here. Still okay. No need to panic. Double tops closing a little bit lower. Price looks like it's starting to dribble off at that point. I just did literally this one two three if it's gonna fail to the upside or the downside but it is gonna fail one of the two okay now where's three have I already seen three or is that the fail well one way to do that, grab the bottom. You can do this if you want, which tells you three's probably in, or if you don't like your lines dirty, you can connect this vector, which tells you the confirmation is yet to come. So let's see which works out. And let me shorten this so it doesn't bother us on Friday. Better. Okay. Any way you look at it, this failed to the downside. Any way you look at it. So three is in, whether you want to count it right here or whether you want to make this three, three is in 
to the downside, which means as we take a look at this, so now we're going to talk about strategy for a second. Gracie says, um, really gives a good sense of the acceleration. Yes, it does. Now, let's talk about context for a moment. Wish I had my slides. I have a slide that says, context is for kings. Anybody ever heard that before? Gracie says first time. Okay, yeah, I've heard it two places. It's from a speech that one of the dead Greeks gave. So that would have been, I don't know, 4,500 years ago? Oh, re Nate's, what, Nate, what you got for me? I've heard it as context is king. And where have you heard it, Nate? Do you have any, or is it just something you've heard? Life, okay. Of all things, I'm embarrassed to tell you, and I'll tell you the truth. I was watching a movie with my son. It's in the last Star Wars film, which you know, I'm not really a Star Wars guy but anymore. But um, apparently they took it out of the Greek speech. But, yeah, I've heard... I've heard it here and there, and I could never put my finger on it. And then I did some researching and went, oh, that's where it comes from. Maybe Shane knows. Shane or Wendy are typing me a, le a lesson here. Oh, maybe I'm not supposed to be seeing this. I, I can't read it. Context is the frame or bucket that holds the content. Hmm. Okay, so what this the con let me let me explain the context of what this meant in the speech. Ready? Laws are for lackeys. That's a that's a literal translation from the Greek. Laws are for lackeys. Context is for kings, meaning the king doesn't have to follow the law. He can take in what's going on and then do what he thinks is right. Uh, oh, my gosh. Edward says, from Genesis, what's the worst sin you could possibly commit? It's sobering to realize the importance God places on interpreting his word properly. God demands that we handle his words with utmost care, and that includes putting every word in its proper context. Hmm. That's interesting. I like that. So let me give you the Greek meaning again. The common man, he has laws to follow. We give him laws. The king, he gets to take in what's going on and make his decision, which would say the bigger and badder you are as a trader, Gracie says, I want to be the king. Yeah, the bigger and badder you are as a trader, of course, the less the laws apply to you um, unless you get caught, I guess would be my <clears throat> these days. All right, all right, so let's follow through. Okay, so context. Oh, there's plenty of queens that were you know, don't say that to Gracie. There's plenty of queens that ran them all. Um, I'm not even going to go through the list. There's so many. Um, so let, let's think about the context and the strategy if you're a trader right now. Think about two things. Think about your short from a significant level. Let's say 7310, just to make up a number. And you see... We've made a move higher, but really haven't eaten up into the gap very far. And now three has failed to the downside. You've got higher highs, but 
Can you see them tip over and then accelerate to the downside? That's our, we're going to get into that with three dimensions. I don't really want to draw much more, uh, so I want to just talk about strategy and context. So as you look at this as a trader, I want you to think about several things here. What What's on your mind? What do, you, what do you think the agenda is here? Are we likely to hold in this flat top area, turn around and take out the highs? Does this failure to the downside completely change the complexion? And we've got a revisit of the 7160 area. And are we going to continue to make lower lows? Remember, you maybe you're short from a good area. Now put yourself in the other chair and assume you got long in this area. You didn't get stopped out. Now you've got some money in it, but the sheeple are jumping off the ship. Is it going to hold in this area? And why would it? Think about it. If, it. if it's going to, why would it? Is it going to revisit this area? And how are you going to deal with it other than just having a, I don't have, I don't have one close, so I'm not gonna bother. Have your goal to go, your stop underneath 7160. And if your stop gets hit, your stop gets hit. That's okay. So I want you to think about both sides and what your, strategy would be if it unfolds the way you, you expect it to unfold. And as you trade, you should be thinking, I tell people um, in the breakfast sessions, you should be thinking at least about 10 bars ahead. What's over here? What is over here for you? The, the more you do this, the more you're gonna understand what what we call the language of price, you're gonna be able to follow this dance in here. And I'll leave the white space. I'm not even gonna move my cursor up or down. I'll leave the white space to you. I want you to think about both sides, whether you're long or short, and then what would make it stop and turn higher? What would make it stop and go lower? Where is it likely to go to the upside? Where is it likely to go to the downside? I need you to think about that for Friday. Then, homework. That'll take about 10 questions or so. Okay, homework. If, actually, I take that back. Even if you have seen this video, and for those of you that are not in Market Maps or Breakfast, if you're not a member, it's okay. You can still see it. Go to uh, the Market Geometry page. Go to Free Info. And there's a video of a wonderful British physicist in the, in the middle of the night, and he's using a Roman-style trebuchet war machine to throw a huge fiery boulder. Have you guys ever seen that? Okay, Grace says no, so it's not well populated. Please go to the free information area. Edward says yes. Okay, Rita says I think so. Even if you've seen it, I want you to watch it again. And the reason why is because the physics in it are astounding. It is not, what's the right word? They talk about context is for kings. It's, it's not intuitive. And yet it'll explain why things that are going up go down. And we're not talking about gravity. Although we will be talking about gravity and gravity waves 
That's not what this gentleman is going to be talking about. Everybody, please, number one thing on your list, go watch that video. Then, if you haven't looked at, uh, Rita will find, one of us will find it and put it up here in this space. But if you just go to the free information area, there aren't that many videos. But I'll get the name and put it up here. And uh, if we if we don't get it in real time, I will put it up at the beginning of Friday's class for anybody that's not in the class that couldn't find it. Because it's, it's something that everybody should watch. <clears throat> so then the last thing is I want you to go to the same area. I know Rita's seen these. I want you to look at trading plans. Now, these are very outdated. However, you need a trading plan. You need, always need a trading plan. Pull up the trading plans, and also there are, uh, I, don't, I don't know what the, what the name on the top of the sheet is, but it'll say, for example, how much are you willing to lose in a day? How many losers in a row are you willing to take? How many losers in the same direction are you willing to take? In other words, are you just going to sell the S&Ps every day, every day, every day, every day, or seven times in a day until your account's gone? Or buy the S&Ps same way. Um, how much are you trying to make in a day? The two actually should be related. And it's not just three to one. Um, breakfast people do not answer this. Let me ask the market math people. Who can tell me if I average three to one on my trades? What does my winning percentage have to be for me to make money? Does anybody know? Todd's got it. 30%. It's, a, it's actually, Nate's, it's, tw it's above 27. That's right, Dominic, I said, no breakfast, but yes, it's 27%, which is actually a number that rings throughout what we do. So. You know, it's it's hell on earth if you're only your winning percentage is below thirty percent, and yet you might be making money. I'm not telling you aim low, but I am telling you those of you that feel like, oh my God, if I don't, Todd says, well that stinks, but Todd, pay attention. People that are let's say at 35%, and somebody says, I'm going to pick on you. Somebody says, you know what? Your winning percentage stinks. They don't need a 55% winning percentage. Or people that talk to me and lie and say, I can win 97 out of 100 times. No, you can't. That's a lie. Not, not with any regularity. Sorry. So you shouldn't feel like I have to swing for that kind of number because that isn't what you need. What you need is three to one risk reward. It covers a whole lot of sins. Does that make sense to you guys? I know I got there, but you might look at your numbers a whole lot differently if you understand the whole story. You know, I always teach in mentoring. That's the, the the last thing you want to look at is your winning percentage. Not the first thing, the last. Who cares about that? What's your risk reward? What's your biggest loss? What's your well, you know, what's your biggest win? What's your average? 
those are important statistics. So there's a page, that's how I got there. There's a page in the free information area that goes through all of that and then you answer some questions because you need to set limits and answers to these things. They will protect you as a trader. Your account won't get sucked down the drain. Money management, says Michael, is a giant step toward being a professional trader. Michael, if, I mean, I had good money management, I was lucky, but when I walked in the door at Commodities Corporation, it was like, um, it was like being put on steroids. Once they tuned up your money management and then tuned up your risk reward and made sure every, it was like, oh my God, you know, across instruments. Um, and I was already good, but it really made a huge difference. And it makes a huge difference even if you're learning to trade, if you understand the numbers. Hey, I don't have to try and win 60% of the time. What I need to do is make good trades. So find that sheet, and you'll, you'll tell right away because on the front page it'll say, how many losses in a day are you willing to take? And then I want you to think about it, and I want you to fill that one out. And you might not fill that one out to the weekend, but find that sheet. So watch the video. Get the trading plan. You can always update it. Find these sheets. They're not hard to find. They're in the free info. They're available to anybody who walks, you know, that just clicks on market geometry, you can find them. It's not hard. And... Be willing to come back on Friday. How's that? Okay, market maps people. Oh, the video isn't easy to find on the web page. Can it be linked to our homework page, please? Yes, I will. Uh, if somebody knows how to just copy the name or the link, go ahead and do it now. Otherwise, I'll do it. At the end of the session, it may not show up until you pop back in 15 minutes afterwards, but it'll be sitting here afterwards. All right, now, <clears throat> question. What? I'm not going to take many, but I'll take a few. Um, what we do in, and these are only market maps, people. Um, the idea today is that you gotta feel for the type of class I do. This was a little dry. Hopefully we'll get a little more exciting on Wednesday. Um, I gotta tell you, I was a little nervous. I haven't seen you guys in a long time. So nobody has any questions? So what we do in breakfast is we have kind of a half hour or so where we, you can, you can ask anything, doesn't matter. A couple of people type it now. I still don't see how it's 27%. Okay. Uh, isn't 25% the break even? I mean, you're in the, oh, here's the flaming trebuchet right there. It's called the, the, there was a series. Um, it's on Netflix, by the way, called The Code. Um, and Mary, thank you very much. I wondered if you're, so you can play this. Don't play it now. Let's finish up. But you can play this when we're done um, right from here if you want. And watch it over and over and over and over. Oh, it's not. Tommy says it's no longer on the website. Hmm. That's why it's hard to find then. I'll have to find out why they took it down. I swear I swear it was up there. Any questions? 25%. Let me Nate, first of all, it is 27%, but rather than go through the math, we're talking about 2%. It's not the 
not the end all and be all. If I were you, I'd just think of it as, boy, if I can get it 30% or higher, and I'm at three to one at least, you're all good. Have you looked at the complete, the complexity theory as it applies to the lack of predictability of the markets, which might eliminate the algos, IIs, et cetera, taking over the markets? Okay, well, Edward, here's my simple answer. The algos and AIs ain't gonna take over anything. So I really don't worry about it. Yes, I know about the complexity theory, but I don't, it's, it's me. If you think that the markets cannot, well, I don't like the word prediction. I don't like prognostication. We're talking about really probabilities. Um, people like me that consistently make money show that the markets are predictable. So unfortunately, Edward, I, I know the math real well. Unfortunately, that doesn't hold true. I know a lot of traders that make a lot of money. And I'm not talking about algos or AIs. Um, one reason why the algos and AIs don't do well is because it's about 80% science slash math. But that 20% that's left is the human side of it, the art, the insight, the complexity, and good luck re reproducing that. Um, this is not gonna be a, let me just stop you right, everybody here. This is, stop, stop. This is not going to be a forum on AI or complexity. So please just stop. If you have your opinion, I'm happy for you. Cause I got people on both sides now. I don't, I don't want I don't care. Okay. This is about trading. Do you have any trading questions? Do you have a specific boilerplate for a trade plan you want us to use? Um, no. I think everybody needs to take a general trading plan and then make it theirs. But once you get something that is yours, you need to follow it every trade. Map out those trades before you take them and follow it. The one thing I do have is that it, for a boilerplate, Michael, is your stop is your stop. You always use stops. They have to be in the market. And they should basically average out at 2.6% of capital or less per trade, which is why my slot is $150 to $300, okay? Edward, it's not that I don't wanna to talk to you, it's just I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna argue either side of this with anybody, period. What you got, Gracie? <coughs> Excuse me. So for the homework, we're looking at three scenarios. If I were short, if I were long, yeah, you can look at I'm not in yet, sure. So I want you to think strategically to the right. What do I see here? How would I deal with it? And then put yourself in those three seats. I like that. If I'm long, I'm short. And remember, if you're short, you got money in it. And if you're long, you're long pretty much at the bottom. So it's not like you're dealing with a loss. You do have a stop in on both, on either one. And if you're trying to get in, you have a trade plan that deals with all that. I like that, Chris. Hey, Steve, how are you? Are you still short the crude? Um, I'm, I don't comment on open positions, um, even if I'm telling you that I'm not commenting on my position. And did you move or stop during the session? I, I, I have no comment. Sorry. <clears throat> I, I've learned that it's it's wise to follow the rules when the government get, gives it to us. Um, I'm looking at those two vectors at the tops and at the bottoms, and it seems like the moment of truth is about to happen. There you go. 
So, Gracie, I'm gonna can I can I ask you a um, quantum question? Okay, here you go. And Grace, I I have no idea whether you care about the stuff or not. Does that mean there's a box there? Grace says yes. Okay, so Grace understands what I'm talking about. Right. I don't. So I like areas where there's a box, and then of course, obviously, I like it when we make an observation because the game's on, right? I like it. See, so says I saw you draw very few media lines. Are you eyeballing them, and there is no need to draw them? Ah, that's a good question. Well, let me let me move back where I was. This is an outer parallel of a modified shift. Hey, Phil. Oh, Gracie and I were talking about a box with a cat in it, Phil. You know what that is? That dang cat, that's right. Phil, you know what that is or not? If you don't, don't. A lot of people do. Okay, so there was a physicist by the name of Schrodinger. And quantum mechanics, he put it all into one thought experiment, which was in the moment of truth, there's a box. And until you observe, meaning open the box and look, the cat is not alive. The cat is not dead. He's in, we don't know what he is. We won't know until we observe. Once we observe, though, he is what he is. He can't change. You can probably get a clearer description, just Google Schrodinger's cat, but it's not one of the hot topics right now. And, um, it means it's decision time, Phil. Um, there you go. Yeah, I've seen this one. Thanks, Edward. Uh, so it, it seems like I need to do some IB stuff because people are actually quoting from older IB ones. That's good. Um, so. We're at decision time, and so um, median lines, they're all over the place here. And as I told you, there's a bunch of tra potential trades you should be watching on Wednesday with two thoughts in mind. If you're somebody that likes to draw median lines, on Wednesday I may draw some if some people ask, and I'm looking. but you can certainly draw them in your it's not that hard but you know again this is an outer parallel when i reflect it down here that makes this an outer parallel and the median line I mean, you can see it and so as we came up to the outer parallel we were going 80 percent andrew says we go 80% to the next likely line. Then we slow to 43 on both sides. We make our decision. That's the box. If we pull back, now we're going toward the center line. 80% probability. As we get closer and closer, it's going to move to 43. On the median line, it's going to be at zero. 43 on either side. If we break through to the downside, it will accelerate 80% down to this line, which is the next most likely line. And of course, after this line, if it gets broken, we have two things. We could have a warning line, or we could have a horizontal or two dimensional line. Okay? So yeah, I do see them. 
but also my LMEs and uh, pardon me for not drawing this in. This is the reflection, the R LME. Those are outer parallels. And this is C1 here because I'm just going to bisect something that was already in there. I'm just going to put it in the center. But I really like to draw them off of pivots if possible. Okay, a couple more questions and I will go have lunch actually. Or are you guys done? I appreciate you spending a couple hours with me. You get two more people typing. If this is my question, we'll call it. Pleasure to all ours. Okay. Hey, Jen. It's so great to see you. Jen was a big, big, big time cross trader here. Let me just tell you. Um, I wondered how things were going up there. Is it warming up up there? Oh, that's okay. I understand. Life happens. Starting to warm up. Okay. Jen made the big move from. She had a house up where I used to live, north side of Chicago. Then she moved. Now she's all the way up in Canada. And uh, cold up there, huh? My pleasure, Rob. Good to see you. You want to move back? Come on back. Hey, Scott, how are you? Uh, Phil, you know I'm okay. The taxes are killing you up there, Jen. I heard there onerous come on back um, this is my friend Scott McClendon who is also uh, one of the students here Scott has been around since about as, about as long as Shane early 2000s um, so you know I mean Phil I'm having a little breathing problems right now but um, that's why I came to Arizona sometimes it is what it is so um, you'll see more of me, Nate. I'm, I've actually, this is not going to be a one-time uh, visit, so um, it's it's time to be more involved in everything again. So I, I appreciate it, Phil. Thank you. It's uh, it's so nice to see some of the people that were here at the very beginning are still here. Um, a lot of the people that were around Dr. Andrews until recently, all the way now, are still getting together in the afternoons down in Coral Gables. So, Shane, I think I'm going to call it. All right. Sounds good. Did you enjoy yourself? I loved it. I love to watch this stuff. Um. We'll uh, open some questions up for um, all the people in the, in the free session a little more next time, maybe. Yeah, and I'll let you read them. Yeah, and then we'll, we'll read them off. We're just running a little low on time here. But I want to I wanna thank everybody for showing up and, you know, just a little bit of a reminder what we do here. You know, it's, it's market maps. And we'll, uh, we'll, we'll go a little bit farther afield on Wednesday. Um, I'm not going to leave anybody in the dust, but pick up the pace a little bit. Um, it'll, you know, it'll just be a little more interesting. And, yeah, a lot. Uh, but a lot of these questions, it's kind of hard to fill in for you from from newer people without a lot of context. You know, we can be here for for the next six hours, so you know, we're doing the best we can with it. Um, but you keep... know, ultimately, what you know, what we're trying to do is is you know, teach people how to learn from price itself, not yeah. just a set of instructions and boom, you go. Trading is much more than that. You know, one thing we're not doing, Shane, we're not calling people on the phone and telling them, um, we could teach you how to teach trading because we need 15 people now. 
and then you know people pay them some money and then they go you know whatever um you know we're traders we paid our dues we're trying to pass pass it forward guys and i expect all of you that make it to do the exact same thing um you know shane was talking about you know what what we're trying to do it's it's difficult here um in the sense that let's say uh shane has been working on something now i step in in the middle think about it this way you know uh, if this has been misquoted let me do the quote correctly for you einstein said that space time is a river and it moves in all directions it's been bastardized into time is a river and it moves forward and back that's not what he said but it that's what we're trying to do here we do have to go back and get the basics we do have to go and expand forward what we're teaching but then again we'll have to come back and pick up the basics because people come people go it's just how it works so it can be difficult but i'm sure uh, shane's done a good job yeah and guys don't forget we got a blog so there's a a lot of good foundational stuff on the free blog, so be, feel free to check it. Did some videos there as well. Yep, and we have we've got uh, articles on MediaLine.com and some new ones coming. And um, I've already talked to IB and CME, and we'll probably end up doing some of those when I get a, a little more caught up in our stuff for us. Um, so, because there's some cool things there as well. Some of us need to hear things a few times again. Well, you know, Edward, training is difficult. You got to deal with your emotions. You got to deal with all the things going on. There's, there's lots of things to learn. There's lots of things to unlearn. So um, it's not a six week thing. It's, it, as far as I'm concerned, and unfortunately, I went to school a long time. Um, it, it's it's as hard as brain surgery. And I'm not saying anything bad about brain surgery. It takes a long time to become a really good trader. It just does. I wish I could make it short. I like that Market Maps teaches good money management and the art of trading. Yep. It all starts with money management, and then the art of trading is... And then managing yourself, Grace. All right. I'm done, Tim. Thank you, sir. All right. Thanks, Tim. I'll, uh, we'll get to see everybody on Friday.